And then a new venue opened this week. It's for scooting your boots. You know, I might have to drag you to it, just considering my, you know, side gig. I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll do some boot scooting. Well, and here's the thing. They're actually, Need to get some boots. <laughs> they're actually a secondary branch to one in Rexburg. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's the Tavern. It just opened up at 210 Cleveland Street in Idaho Falls. Mm-hmm. I think in the old Northgate Appliance building, but I'm not sure. We'll have to double check. We'll we'll go scoot our boots and we'll tell y'all about it. <laughs> yeah, but it's a, okay. It's a honky tonk <laughs> mocktail bar and dance hall. That actually sounds super fun, though. On Wednesdays, Fridays, Fridays and Saturdays, mm-hmm. they do a half hour swing dance class from seven thirty to eight. That is so fun. And then from eight to midnight, you get to work on your uh, your swing on your swinging because it don't mean a thing. If you ain't got that swing. Thank you. And you know what? I have been thinking, I think just to, you know, sort of sell my persona, I might have to get some cowgirl boots. Really? Yeah. To be fair, I actually had some as a kid and I loved them. Maybe it's time to... Well, and you love Jesse from Toy Story. I was obsessed. I had a (laughs) whole Jesse room. We had to get a shot of you when we went to uh, Disneyland in California Adventure Mm -hmm. next to your hero. Yeah. Yeah, with the critter sign. (laughs) And you had just started working for 96.1 and 102 on The Wolf. I had, yes. So that was like... That's true. That was a perfect promo shot for you for a minute. It was so fun. (laughs) And I, if you asked me in high school, what kind of music you, do you like? It would have been, I like everything but country and opera. And since then, <laughs> since then, I've learned to love both. That's funny. Mine would have been uh, everything but country and rap. Yeah. Funny that both of us say country. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I think maybe if, if there's one genre I still am just not into, it's the uh, cookie monster death metal. It's the stuff that goes... <laughs> Oh, yeah. And then well, once that got boring, they started going, rah, 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 hey! That's and, and, fair. <laughs> and, and then screaming, too. And I'm just like, I don't get, I I guess my, ang- I guess I've worked out all my angsty mm-hmm. teenage issues. And I it just, right. it's, in fact, it's so unrelatable that it's kind of funny to me. <laughs> That's fair. You know? Now, I... I have sort of a theory around music. Yeah. This is Carly's theory of music. Okay. Carly's musical theory class. You're welcome. Anyway. Yes. I'm my taking idea, notes. My idea is anytime you think you don't like a genre, go to a live show. Okay. Because the first time I realized I actually kind of sort of do like country, I was working the Garth Brooks Stadium Tour. And they wanted to send me away back to the house. Uh, no, it wasn't even, they wouldn't send us back there. So I would actually have time. They wanted us to like sit in a break room and not get paid. And I was like, no, Lame. if I'm going to be Wage here. <laughs> well, yeah, basically <laughs> I was like, if I'm going to be here and I can't use my time as I please, you're going to pay me for my time. Yeah. And they're like, well, I guess that's a good point. <laughs> and so they made me work on the actual show while he played. And at one point I even had to like run out and grab guitars and stuff. It was really cool. But when he started singing Friends in Low Places. Oh, yeah. And the crowd got into it. It's, I was, a, it's a banger. I was it's a scoot- classic. I was scooting my boots backstage. <laughs> It was awesome, dude. And it then, was so good. <laughs> and then did he do the extra verse? Oh, I don't know. There, there's an extra verse. Is it the kiss my ass verse? I think it is. I but, think he did. Yeah. Yeah, I think he did. And It's I, been so long, I'm not totally sure, but probably. Garth was probably <laughs> the one that got me into country music. Right. Yeah, well, early and I, remember, 90s. I remember seeing my mom's albums of him. I specifically re- remember the one in the black and white shirt. You oh, yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was like, why does she have this? This is gross. And then I and then I went and I did and, and then I went and I worked his show and I was like, okay, actually mom always yeah. mom's always right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that first got me into it. Um and then I heard a couple of other country concerts after that. I actually went to a John Party show uh as part of my sort of introduction to the wolf, and it was a blast and a half. And I also went to a local screamo band, well, death metal band. And I wasn't really into death metal before, but after that, I was like, all right, it's kind of (laughs) hot. It's kind of hot. Anytime you think you don't like the music, go see it live because the energy sells it, man. And I would offer a counterpoint. I don't, live music does nothing for me unless it's a band riffing on familiar music, which Mm. typically for me is jazz. When they, when they... Turn like a, th- a three-minute jazz standard song into 12 minutes of 
you know, xylophone, then keyboards, then oh, that's cool. sax, then scatting, then, you know, I mean, it just, that mm-hmm. blows my mind. And I guess that's the big appeal for like bands like the Grateful Dead and Fish, mm-hmm. you know, is they'll, they'll do a song and then they'll just like a jam session. That's cool. But otherwise, I'd, li- I'd rather listen to this. I'd rather say, hey, Siri, play blank. Right. I get that. I really got into country music four or five years ago. After a high school reunion, a buddy of mine came to stay, or, or was he staying for that? No, I think it was a fishing trip later in the summer. But we stayed up all night, and, and he, was, he was a total, like, edgy dude in high school. Like, we, <laughs> you know, he had bangs down to his chin. We were waivers. Oh. I won't give you the adjective that they called us before the word waiver mm. as they pushed us in, into lockers for not liking Motley Crue in yeah. high school. <laughs> But uh, I think you probably know what it is. And uh, and and he was like, hey, dude, you want to listen to some country music? And I'm like, no. Yes? <laughs> no. Yes. Yes? And uh, so we stayed up probably till 4 a.m. Wow. Just listening because he would just, one song would lead to another, to another, to another. And mm-hmm. I got, it was quite the music education for me. Mm-hmm. You know, country music comes from... Let's let's start with Hank Williams, but then I want to back it up. Before then, there was Robert Johnson, the guy who uh, sold his soul to the devil at the crossroads, right? In yeah, Mississippi or Memphis or wherever that was. Before that, Probably dude, Mississippi. There were they do shit like that down there. <laughs> there were Appalachian folk songs. Before that, mm-hmm. they were the folk songs in Ireland and from uh-huh. Britain and stuff. So, so that traditional, I don't know, Celtic music. Came to America, and now we have, you know, Keith Urban. And I actually realized there was another country song that also got me into country, but it didn't get me as into country as Garth Brooks. When I went to visit my aunt in Connecticut, like I mentioned earlier, her husband played us a song called um, Riding with Private Malone, I believe is the name. Uh, But it's basically, it's about this guy who gets a car, fixes it up, and he almost gets into a car wreck, but the ghost of the guy who owned the car before saves him. Oh. Yeah. Sounds cool. (laughs) It's really cool. But anyway, (laughs) I remember when we got back to Idaho, Tyson went to CD World and bought that CD. Wow. Yeah. Is he more of a country fan than you are? Uh, No. No, he's not really a country guy either. He actually really likes EDM. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Virtual high five to Tyson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But that song, for some reason, the entire time we were on that trip, we kept being like, Uncle Jay, can we listen to Private Malone again? (laughs) It just, we just dug it, dude. You know, being a kid on road trips was so fascinating to me. So I had pretty conservative parents, but my grandparents, not so much. (laughs) So they had, you know, pop music in the car on 8-track. Whoa! When I heard ABBA Super Trooper for the very first time, it blew my little mind. Oh, how could it not? That may have been the first cool pop song I ever heard in my entire life. So then I said, Grandpa, can you back it up? (laughs) And he sort of, I could hear him rolling his eyes. He backed it up. And I was just like, again, again, again. And eventually the entire car was, Mike, no. I was the youngest in the car, <laughs> so I lost. Well, and also, can we just say, now parents have to deal with Radio Disney. <laughs> yeah. So, well, really, and, your and grandpa baby had shark. easy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Baby right. Shark. No. Oh, no. <laughs> do, do, See, do, 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 do. if I ever have a kid, I swear, if someone shows them <laughs> something like Baby Shark, I will lose it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's almost like giving a kid like a noisy toy for yes. Christmas. Oh, it's When evil. you don't have to live with them. <laughs> evil. <laughs> evil. As in the fruits of the devil. <laughs> so anyway, the tavern is open. 210 Cliff Street. We'll be there. If you like to boot scoot Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. We'll see you as we're scooting our boots. <laughs>